only one hero can save her family and prevent disaster. Mom, we're gonna be late for school. I don't think so. Whoa. Experience the phenomenon that critics are calling inspiring. Mom, I can't find number 17. Come on, Billy. Dig deep. A lot of fun. And pure genius. Mom, where's my phone? Table. Keys. Mudroom. Dragon Man. Under the couch between the monkey and the flip-flop. How does she do that? Created by God to demonstrate his love with grace, elegance, and poise. Butane torch? Amen, amen, amen. Again, moms, we are so thankful for all your hard work. I almost had uh, somebody come up here, a, a mom come up and show us how it's done, but I didn't want to put us completely to shame uh, this morning, gentlemen. But uh, thank you for being good sports as we go uh, and have fun with that. But uh, Moms, uh, I, I don't want you to be shy in this next moment. I need all of our moms in the house to stand to your feet. We want to recognize you today. Come on, stand up. Church, can you help us one more time? Give, a, give it up for our moms in this place. Amen, amen, amen. I can honestly say this morning, I don't know how you do it. And I know just a moment ago we had fun playing a game, and uh, that game kind of gives us a glimpse of what a moment as mom might look like. And I think I'm going to need to get some of these guys a spa day after that stressful moment that they just experienced. Maybe some aromatherapy candles to help them wind down a little bit today. And the video that we just played highlights some more of mom's well, I guess we could call them superhero abilities that seem to never stop. And that's no matter how crazy a day might be or how busy a season might be or jumbled up a schedule might become. I tell you one thing for sure that uh, I see in action in our home all the time is that ability to know where things are all the time. Mom, have you seen this? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Mom, do you know where this is? And actually, I need to per uh, personalize this because it's more often than not, it's me asking, honey, have you seen my keys? Have you seen my hat? Or there's been moments like, I might, you know, have you seen my microphone as it's attached to my face? Or, or you know, sunglasses that are on my... Anybody know what I'm talking about? And very similar to what they showed in the video, she doesn't even have to blink an eye. She knows right where to guide you to go. For that. Somehow moms just seem like they have the ability to do it all. And this morning we've laughed, we've, we've chuckled a little bit, we shared a fun moment together, but we know that life isn't always fun and games. And we know what moms do is really serious stuff. And we're thankful for that this morning. You do far more than just manage a house or organize a schedule. We know this morning moms that you care for that you nurture, that you guide, that you hold, that you love on, that you educate, and you prepare your family for what they might experience in the minutes or the hours or the days to come. What you do is truly amazing. And we are thankful this morning for your hard work. And this morning we're going to shift gears just a little bit. And we're going to look at a passage of Scripture today that at the get-go doesn't seem very happy, doesn't seem like a very encouraging moment, but I just encourage you to stay with us for just a moment. It is not a moment in mom life that one of the characters in the story was looking forward to for sure. She had no answers for the situation that she found herself in. Now I want us to imagine for just a moment what it would be like to not have 
anything left to give. Imagine for a moment that all your resources are gone, dried up. There's nothing left. Imagine for a moment that a drought had come to the land and it had decimated everything. No more food. No more means of growing any more food. No more finances to go out and to purchase or to acquire any more food. And while these physical resources are very important for the well-being of any household, there were other resources that had dried up in the drought as well. Resources like hope. Resources like peace. Assurance. These things had all but dried up in the story that we're going to look at this morning. Now, I can't imagine what it would have been like to maybe go to a cabinet and see only enough resource to make one last meal for my family, knowing there was nothing I could do to replenish that resource. Are you following me this morning? I want you to understand the desperation of this moment to look at the cabinets and to know that once I use that up, that's it. I can't go to the store and buy anymore. I can't go. It, 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 it's gone. That's it. Nothing I could do to replenish that. And I imagine that our hope might have looked something like this mother's hope, who was also a widow. We find her story in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 12. She was gathering a few sticks to take home to make a final meal, Scripture says, for herself and her son. And these are her words from Scripture in verse 12, that we may eat it and die. That was it. She was finished. There was nothing else that she could do. She was spent. Her resources were spent. No rain had come. There were no clouds on the horizon. The brook was dried up. She had nothing left to give. And this might seem like a strange direction to go this Mother's Day, but God laid this passage on my heart several weeks ago, and I could not shake it. Moms, listen to me. We see all that you do, and in no way are we questioning your superhero-like abilities. We see what is going on on the outside, but only God can see what is going on on the inside, and he wants you to know this morning that he sees you. And I know that the seasons and the times in recent years have been difficult, but I want you to understand this morning, God sees you in the emotional struggle. God sees you when you have little to nothing left to give. God sees you in the fight. Moms, do you believe that this morning? Amen. God sees you in the fight, in the battle each and every day. He knows your weariness. He knows your concerns. And yes, if we're real this morning, our world gives us much to be concerned about. Moms, maybe you're listening here today or you're watching online and maybe you can relate to the position that the widow found herself in. Nothing left to give. Tired. Ready to give up. The weight of the season is real. The hopelessness of the world is is real the emotional toil that it takes on your or, or the emotional toll that it takes on your soul and spirit is real but i want you to never forget something this morning and i want you to hear my words clearly the everlasting power of our god is real and he wants you to have new hope today he wants to fill you with new peace today moms dads listen to me everyone in this room i want you to hear these words and take them to heart Yes, you might find yourself living in what you would describe as a season of drought. You might be going through a dry spell today, but God is in this place and he is ready to renew you. He is ready to refresh you, not just part of you, but all of you today. He wants to renew you with his word. He wants to refresh you with his spirit and reassure you with his love this morning. And there's one point to the sermon today, and that just got a lot of people excited. They're like, wow, one point. We're getting out of here early. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate that confident head shake. He's like, no way, uh-uh. There's one point today and one key 
and how we experience that refreshing to God. And it's simple to this. As we see in our story, this widow had nothing left to give, but what she had, she gave all to God. The prophet Elijah was traveling as the Lord had commanded him to go. God instructed him to go to the area where these two would meet, this widow and this prophet. And God had told him that this widow would supply him with food. Now, this is the same widow church that had nothing left to give. Now, that seems kind of odd, doesn't it? Come on. You know, here here we see this individual who has nothing left, and God instructs Elijah to go to this area, to go to this region, and she will supply you with the food that you need in this season. In fact, let's look at it. 1 Kings chapter 17, beginning with verse 7. This is the story in full. Sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, him being Elijah, go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. Verse 10, so he went to Zarephath where when he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. This is where we saw what I mentioned just a moment ago. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so that I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, And bring me, please, a piece of bread. And here's her response. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and to make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. But look at his words in verse 13. Don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then some, or make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, said. Here's the promise. The jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her, so there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. Remember, let's pause for just a moment. She had just enough to feed herself and her son one more meal. And look at verse 15. There was food every day for not only her and her son, but also Elijah. Look at verse 16. For the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word the Lord spoken, or the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Now this is an amazing story. Amen? An incredible encounter between a widow, a mother, who has nothing left to give, And Elijah, who comes on the scene and encourages her to give all back to God. The mother's situation is turned completely around. Her hopelessness is turned completely around. The devastation in the moment is turned completely around. But church, not until she made the choice to give everything that she had to give to God. The first thing I want you to see in this encounter is not an accident. God sent Elijah to this place. This encounter was orchestrated by God. Never forget that God had sent Elijah this direction on purpose. And when he gave Elijah those instructions, what did he tell him? He said, you will meet a widow there who I have have told or instructed or led her to to supply you with food. Now, again, it just seems kind of crazy in my mind because Elijah, he gets this part of the plan. Not knowing that on the other side of the equation is a widow who is in desperate need. That the very thing that, that, that she would provide for him was the very thing that she was running out of. Right? Nothing left to give, but God brought this divine moment together. It was orchestrated by God. He saw both the need of Elijah and he saw the need of the mother. God's answer to this need would be nothing less than miraculous. But consider this. 
The miracle happened on the heels of both the widow and Elijah responding to the given word of God. God has given us his word as a resource today. How many are glad to have this today? About half of us. Come on now. How many are glad to have this today or to have access to this today? How many know today that this is a resource given to us by God, a resource that will never run dry? Do we understand that this morning? Our world, oh, here we go. Our world would try to tell us that this book is irrelevant. Our world would try to tell us that this book is fairy tale. Our world would try to line this thing up with Greek mythology and other stories like that. Can I tell you something? This is truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth today that needs to be applied to our lives, that needs to be the foundation of how we live. This word is a resource that will never run dry. And I am thankful today that God has given us this word today. No matter what season of life you might find yourself in this morning, his word, church hear me, his word can and will sustain you. His word will guide and direct you. His word will give you strength you need to take on the next step, even when that next step feels impossible. The Bible is far more than a self-help book or a motivational book poster. Listen, church, the word is truth, and the word brings life. The word gives us strength to stand. Church, listen to me. When everything else fails, God's word will not. Elijah found himself before a widow who had but just enough food to feed herself and her son one more time. How could she care for his needs as well. Could Elijah really receive food that would literally take food off the table for either the widow or her son? The widow found herself before Elijah, before one that was asking for food and provision. She knew her situation well. And she knew that if she gave, either herself or her son would have nothing. Could she really choose between her son or herself and feeding Elijah? Well, verse 13 It reveals the key. The word that is given speaks to the fear that she feels in the moment. What does he say right out the gate? Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. God speaks through Elijah and immediately begins to speak to the emotional need in the situation. And how many times today, moms, dads, listen, how many times do we find ourselves in a, in a difficult position? Does that sense of fear try to begin to overwhelm us? Been there? I have. Anybody else? Come on. How many times when we begin to face an obstacle or we begin to face a trial or we begin to walk through something that, that was unexpected or is unprecedented, does that fear try to set in? And God, through Elijah, begins to speak to that need. He says, do not be afraid. Second, the word that is given speaks to the lack that they were experienced. God, through Elijah, speaks hope, speaks life to the situation. The word was delivered, but before the miracle could happen, it had to be received. In other words, the mother would have to act in faith on what God had instructed her to do. The second detail in this that I want us to see is that the mother is no longer acting in hopelessness or fear, but she is now acting by faith according to the word that was given. She takes what she has and does what the Lord says to do. Verse 15 tells us that she went away and did as Elijah had told her, and her faith in God's word led her to act against the hopelessness and fear that she had been feeling. Did you hear those words? Her faith in God's word allowed her to act against the hopelessness and fear that she had been feeling. She had very little left to give, and instead of doing what she thought she knew to do with what was left, she gave all that she had left back to God. Maybe you've been doing everything that you know to do to get by. Maybe you've been struggling. You're working hard. You're stretching your resources. 
spending your energy with very little to show for your efforts. Maybe in your weariness you've lost hope. Maybe you've struggled to keep going. I want you to hear me this morning and hear the word of God. Your breakthrough will not result from running yourself ragged and doing all that you can do. Your breakthrough will come when you decide to give all that you are back to the Lord today. Your breakthrough will come when you say to God, Lord, I know I can't, but I know you can. Come on. Lord, I know I can't, but I know you can. Faith is more than a thought or good intention. Hello? Faith is more than a thought or good intention. Scripture tells us in order for faith to be alive within us, it has to be acted upon. It has to be lived out. Faith without action is what? Dead. Dead. Faith moves us to do as God leads us to do. By faith, the mother took action according to the word that was given to her. And because of her faith, God turns that situation around. The third detail I want us to notice comes from 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse 16. Let's look at this again. It says, the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry. In keeping with the word uh, of the Lord spoken by Elijah, guys, God delivered. God moves in this situation as only God can. He does exactly what had been promised after she had given Through her faith, God delivered by a miracle. The mother's hope now restored. Her resources now had been replenished. Her situation had been completely turned around. And notice something. Her circumstance had not changed. Well, pastor, what do you mean by that? The drought remained. She still had little or no hope of going out and growing food or purchasing food or acquiring food in any other way. Her resource, her provision came only from God. And despite the situation at hand, despite the drought, God delivered for her in a way that she knew, she knew, she knew. This was God on the move. And if you keep reading the story, she encounters another obstacle through which God delivers again for her. But the key in her continued deliverance is her continued faith. In God. Her supermom powers had met their match. Her ability to overcome, overcome had become overwhelmed. But God saw her in this time of need and provided for her as only He can. We know this morning that the jar did not run empty. We know this morning that the oil did not dry up. God sustained her and her family through a season of drought. And what I want everybody in this room to understand today is I don't know what circumstance you might find yourself in. I don't know what level of hope or peace or assurance that you might have going on within you. But this I know as we sang just a moment ago, our God can deliver you our God can renew you our God can refill you today he wants to take you out of that miry clay and set your feet on the rock to stay as we sing come on and before we experience the miracle we got to take the step of faith before that situation turned around she had to go make that meal she had to put that little bit of bread in front of Elijah first, in obedience to what God told her to do. And can I tell you something, and again from personal experience, if you want to wear yourself out fast, 
and I mean fast, then walk in disobedience to what God is telling you to do. Because nothing will tap you out faster than running away from God. Been there and done that. But hear my words as testimony, but more importantly, look to the Word of God. When you give all to Jesus, come on, when you give your life to Christ, the Word tells us we receive life more abundantly or life to the full. When we walk in in obedience to what God is telling us to do, it opens the door for Him to bless our lives in ways that we couldn't even begin to imagine or think of as possible. I have seen God do things in situations. I have seen God work in ways that I never saw or strategized or planned for. When we give all to God, when we take that step of faith, and when we are willing to obey the word of God, it gives God the freedom to move It gives the Spirit of God freedom to move, and it puts the Word of God in control of the situation. Church, listen to me. With that kind of a a formula or equation at work, nothing will be impossible. Pastor, you don't know my situation. I know. Listen to me. I'm not trying to downplay where you might be today. I'm not trying to downplay your circumstance, but it doesn't really get any more desperate than what we see in the Word of God. A drought had happened. There's nothing left. But God delivers. God delivers. God delivers. And he delivers. Come on. I'm thankful today that our God knows where we are. Before this encounter ever happened, God had a plan to not only sustain Elijah, but to meet the needs of this mother. But that plan would not have come into reality unless she was willing to give all to God. Children's Church, I'm going to go ahead and dismiss you guys to the foyer. You guys know what to do this morning as we close. I love these kids. We're going to turn on some music very quietly in the background this morning. I don't know what kind of season you might find yourself in today. I don't know your level of hope, your level of peace, your level of assurance. I don't know if you're tired or if you're weary. Maybe you're here and you feel like you can't even take that next step. Your circumstance may be heavy. Your ability to overcome might be failing. You've tried and you've tried and you've tried. And you've tried. Church, listen to me. You're not meant to carry this load on your own. You were not meant to face the difficulties of the day by yourself. God is with you. If you don't hear any other part of this message, I want you to hear these words right now. God is is with you. Even in these moments when when the mother was facing this absolutely terrible situation, down to her last bit, down to the last handful of flour, to the last few drops of oil, this is it. Does God not see me? Does he not care about my situation? Absolutely he does. And although she couldn't see it in that moment directly, God had already put a plan together that would carry her through, carry her son through that season of drought. God is with you. I want us to bow our heads and close our eyes across this place. He has not abandoned you. He has not given up on you. God is with you. 
He will sustain you. He wants to fill you with new hope and assurance and strength today. He has given you his word that you might hear his promises. He has given you his word that you might find new strength and hope in him. But you have to believe his word to the point that you are willing to act on his word. You have to be willing to give him everything. The widow gave everything that she had in obedience to the word of God. And we see God bless her for her faith. God isn't asking for your flour and oil this morning. He is asking for your heart. He gave all that he had to give through Jesus Christ to deliver us from the hopelessness and despair of sin. Jesus gave it all that we might have the opportunity to have life more abundantly. Through his giving, we have hope. Through his giving, we find peace. Through his giving, we have assurance. Through his giving, we find breakthrough. And I wonder if this morning, in response to what Christ has done for us, are you willing to give back back to him today? Pastor, what do I need to give him? Everything. Which means your heart. more than your resources. Give him your heart. Give him your family, your emotions, all that you are, your strength, your weaknesses, your struggles. Give him everything. Come to that place where we say, Lord, I know I can't but I know you can. With all head bowed, eyes closed this morning, maybe you're in this place and you say, Pastor, I'm overwhelmed. I'm in a dry spell. My strength is giving out. I'm weary. I'm tired. I need God's help. And in this moment, I want to respond by giving him my heart, giving him my circumstance, giving him my situation, stepping in faith, because I know he can. If that's you, just quickly where you're at, raise your hand so I can see you. Anybody here today say, I need God's help. Amen. Amen. I need God's help. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Father, you see the hands. And more importantly, God, you know the hearts, you know the struggles. I pray in this moment that the noise of the circumstances that surround us would be silenced, that we might focus on the sound of your voice speaking to us right now. Peace. Be still. Lord, it's been a busy and trying season with too many details to even begin to lay out. But God, you see every moment. You know every struggle. You see us, and you are with us. And I pray right now for those who raised a hand who said, I need God's help that you would begin to speak, God, to their hearts, to their souls, God, that they would begin to sense your spirit at work right now. And Father, I pray for breakthrough in every one of these circumstances. I pray for breakthrough. I pray in the name of Jesus 
for a turnaround. God, something only you can deliver. I pray, Father, for obedience. I pray, God, that as your spirit speaks to us and as your word speaks to us, that, God, we would obey by faith and, God, we would walk in the steps that your spirit would lead us and guide us to take, that we would put ourselves on the shelf and give you everything that we are today. I pray for deliverance. I pray for hope. And I pray today, God, for an assurance, an unbreakable assurance. Father, lift them up today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. It starts when we take that first step. Remember what I said a moment ago. Faith has to be more than a good thought or an intention. Amen? It's a step of faith that is in, in, it's in accordance with the Word of God. In other words, the steps we take have to line up with this. Come on. There's been a lot of things out there here recently where I've heard people say, well, God told me to do this or God said to do this and it actually led that person to sin. Can I tell you something? God will never, 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 never lead you to sin. Never. He's only going to lead you to life. Take the step God is leading you to take today. And in doing so, get ready. This is exciting to say. Because your breakthrough is coming. Come on. Can somebody help me give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this place? Your breakthrough is coming today. God's got this. And God's got you. I want to pray for our moms before we're dismissed this morning. Heavenly Father, one more time we lift you up. God, we magnify you. We thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, God, for your spirit. And right now in this moment, we also thank you for our moms today. I pray that you would bless them today, that you would strengthen them today. God, that they would be filled with your spirit today, not just today, but each and every day, Father, as they work so hard in our homes and in our families. God, I'm thankful, Lord, for the blessing that they are this morning. And I pray, Jesus, that when we hit those hard moments, God, that when we face those difficult circumstances, that we would turn to you first. God, that we would look to you for our strength, that we would look to you for our wisdom, and that we would hear from your spirit, God, and follow in the way that you would lead us to go. But continue to bless this church, bless these families. God, bless our moms today. We love you and we thank you for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said... Amen, amen, amen. Just a quick reminder tonight, no service because of graduations and Mother's Day. God bless you. Have a wonderful day in the presence of God. Amen? Amen.